Marion, welcome to Halloween Daily. Thank you so much for hanging out and talking to us today. I am happy to be here. Thanks so much for having me. It's always great to talk to the horror family. Absolutely. And um, we were lucky enough, we, we caught up with you for a few minutes out in Pasadena a few weeks ago for the epic 45 Years of Terror event. And since then, as we're recording this, Halloween itself was just a, a few weeks ago. So I'm going to start there and just ask, how was your Halloween this year? It's always fun. Um, I, I get to go to parties dressed as me. Um, <laughs> That's right. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't do that. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I think the public sphere is the most fun for me because I go on my social media and people just ask me questions or they wish me a happy Halloween or, you know, tell me to lock my back door or whatever, you know, Absolutely. and it's just, it's just awesome. I, I, I think that that's really the most fun of just having the opportunity that I had, even though it was a really small part in the film of being able to access the community that is the Halloween franchise and the horror genre and all of that. Everybody is just so warm and welcoming and fun. And the Pasadena experience was amazing, yeah. but Halloween was really cool. Halloween is, is pretty much going to be cool from here on out just because of everything that's happened, I think. Yeah, I was going to say, um, in the last five years, obviously, the holiday, I'm sure, has taken on even more meaning for you than it did before uh, working on a film that is synonymous, of course, with the holiday itself. Um, do you have memories, though, of be before your time in Haddonfield, um, like growing up and going trick-or-treating, do you have fond memories of celebrating Halloween then? Yes, I do. We always dressed up. My sister and I would go and our neighborhood, It would, you know, we got to uh, get our, our pillowcases or whatever, you know, and, and go from door to door. And Halloween was always fun because I guess I've been on stage since I was four years old. And so costumes and makeup and things like that have always been part of my growing up. And uh, it was really, it was really fun to stretch the limits of what I thought I could do with costume. And uh, even even into later life, uh, going to more um, grown up Halloween mm -hmm. parties and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I was never the person who was like, oh, I get to be a stripper one day a year, let's go, or whatever, right. you know. Uh, and we're those scantily little, scantily clad people right. walking around. But mine was, I want to be Captain Jack Sparrow or I want to be, yeah. you know, I mean, I would really stretch it to see what I could pull off. And uh, I think that just the the uh, workmanship of coming up with the details and the cosplay of yeah. of becoming whoever or whatever you want to become is really it's, it's a magical part of the year. And I don't think that any other holiday quite matches up with Halloween for being able to become something yes. or someone else. And the gen the ingenuity, the original costumes that people come up with, it, it's a, quite hilarious a lot of times. But I was, I was really one to, uh, you know, because I have a martial arts background, I would wear like an emperor's or an empress costume or, or something like that, or a gladiator of, of, ancient Rome or whatever. And I don't know, it, it is truly a time that you can slip the bonds of your true identity and piddle around in other pools, as it were. Absolutely. And I think, like you said, for a lot of people, starting even at a young age, and many of them carry it into careers later on in life, that it's it's that creativity and, and that, like you said, being able to become something that maybe you're not every day and, and, um, and just you know, flex those muscles that you don't all the time. Um, and, and I gotta I tell you, yeah. I gotta tell you, when I was at the age 45, mm -hmm. all the people who were Michael Myers in different films, in different, oh, yeah. you know, in all the sequels, and they would, they, you could tell, you oh, could yeah. tell they put so much into it and they studied and the movement of the shape and how the shape would move in different films and they dress the part and, and there are differences in the masks and differences yep. with the weapons. And I mean, they went all out and they would stop across from my table and just look at me. And I was like, doing good, man. You're doing really, really, I'm sorry. It, you're doing really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. And, and I love 
you know, again, every day is Halloween for us anyway, but I mean, I love cosplay and, and the convention scene where it does take that part of the Halloween holiday and, and really embraces it even more and everybody can really just enjoy. And I, I love the whole advent of cosplay and, and, and the, the convention outlet for that too. I think that people have a real, these films and other, I mean, everybody yeah. that cosplays, everybody, I mean, whether they go to Comic-Con yeah. or Dragon Con or, or a Halloween convention, a horror convention in general, I think that they have part of their, something spoke to them mm -hmm. that makes them want to go so far as to assume this this identity and I mean the costumes are absolutely amazing at some of these places and you just really know that this film or something in the film just struck a tone with them yeah. and they get to share how much they love it with everybody else and that is pretty cool and that's the part that I really enjoy about witnessing fans it's awesome yeah I, I love that part too and on the Halloween holiday, we always have to ask everybody, what is your favorite costume? I know there's probably a lot to choose from from what you've told us already, but your, your favorite costume you've worn and your favorite Halloween candy or treat. Oh, no. Uh, um, <laughs> okay. okay, okay, let's see. Well, you, could, see. you could tell us more than one, I guess. Okay, all right, cool. Um, I think I enjoyed, I have a, I should have, I should have imported some pictures on this. Um, I dressed up as uh, the Batman comics Harley Quinn uh, with the crazy white face and the and the you know the, not the scantily clad thing because I, I don't really get into that. That's that's and, you know everybody knows you're female. You don't really need to you know you want to sell a dress, put it in the window. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but I discovered the white face. Uh, makeup technique that worked for me and you know a lot of people just use the grease paint and you can see mm -hmm. the fingerprints and the streaks and all that yeah. and what I figured out was that if you use baby powder on top of the grease paint your face is whitey white I mean it is like reflecting light it is so white so I really enjoyed that one and then of course I think because of high demand I was Captain Jack Sparrow for three years in a row um because I had I had real like stuff. Yeah. I had the suede boots. I had a a duster jacket, a buccaneer style duster jacket. I had the compass. I had I had you know my three foot long hair. So I braided it into the braids. I put beads in it like he had, and I had the hat with feathers in it and all of that. And I just I just went crazy with it. I went nuts. And I'm not one for gender bending just in general, but. That was a fun costume, and I walked around like him, and I talked like him, and and um, so that was that was another favorite. I would say uh, definitely that was that was a really fun one as well. But you know, gosh, I think those are my top my top two. Okay, I'll stop at two, nice, but nice. yeah, those those are probably my top two. And just dressing up like a kung fu person in in traditional costume is in our traditional uniforms which looks like a costume, you know, I, yeah. I wear my stuff that I went, I went to China, uh, three times I've been to China, uh, because of the martial arts stuff. And I competed on team USA for my Northern praying man of style for my grandmaster. And I bought all kinds of cool Chinese, you know, silk brocade stuff. So sometimes I'll pull that out and I'll mix it in with something else. And those are always well received because it's like, shoes, you know, <laughs> it looks, oh, it looks God. really cool. But yeah. Oh yeah, I bet. And you? What about you? Very cool. What's your favorite? Oh man, well, I mean, you know, Michael Myers is, of course is a is a go to for me. But I mean, from like childhood, maybe uh, I know I was Dracula one year. I've got a picture that I still hang on to from that. That that was kind of uh, maybe life defining in a way, you know, or predicting anyway. So th those are definitely two of two of my all time favorites. I was a robot one time, and. and my mom made the whole box robot outfit and everything, which uh, oh, wasn't too so cool. convenient uh, going like navigating around, but it, 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 I'm sure it looked awesome at the time. I'm sure it looked awesome. Definitely a memorable one in my head for sure. And that's another thing about cosplayers. Yes. They have to want it. Those costumes oh, yeah. are hot. 
uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, all props to the cosplay community. I mean, I mean, they outdo themselves every year. They're trying to top what they did last year. It, it's absolutely amazing. All respects. All respect. Yeah, I I love seeing what they do. Um, and oh, and did you say a Halloween candy or a Halloween treat? Oh yeah. Um, I think I like the peanut M and M's. Yes. I'm going to go too. for the peanut M&M's. Although, who has ever had the victory, the feeling of victory from the full-size Snickers? Yeah. <laughs> That's the right. The full-size Snickers, baby. <laughs> That's like a meal in itself. It's, yeah, it you is. Can't yeah. Go wrong there. Yeah, you can like... trade that full-size Snickers for a bunch of stuff. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's the classic, though. You can't go wrong with that. Yeah. Like nope. you said, ult ultimate victory with that. So um, you mentioned your martial arts background. Is is that what led you into stunt work and that led into acting? Or how, how did, tell us more of your origin story of how you got into performing on screen. Is it something you've always wanted to do? Or um, tell us a little bit about how you got started. Okay. Well, as I had said, I've been on stage since I was four years old. My dad worked in public television, so I'm used to being on a set. Okay. And um we would, every year when they had the membership drives and all that stuff, we would go and we would help stuff envelopes or answer phones or whatever. Yeah. So I've been used to being around the industry since I was knee high to a grasshopper, as you say, uh, as people say. I don't know who says that. Who said that? I don't <laughs> know. Um, but I did play, I did theater first and then uh, choir. I think everybody's pretty much done chorus if you do anything like that. So mm -hmm. it was theater. Then uh, singing and dancing, playing musical instruments. I, I've been uh, playing uh, electric bass and I sing lead I, I, in a band I used to be in. And now I just do it in studio. I don't, I don't, I, I learned my lesson. Let me put it that way from touring. <laughs> you get over it real quick. Um, but I did. Uh, so theater, then acting, then singing, dancing, playing musical instruments. Then high, uh, it was high school theater again and chorus and band, you know, jazz band. I played in the jazz band at that point. And um, after I graduated, I got into local theater and uh, I got into, uh, I did the touring thing with the band right out of high school. And we almost got two record deals. We were so close, um, but we toured as far West as Texarkana, as far North as Joliet, Illinois, and as far South as um, Destin, Florida. So that's a long time on a bus. Yeah. But we uh, after that, I got into martial arts. So martial arts kind of, I didn't know. It's one of those things you don't know that you like it until you get into it and then you can't stop. So I went uh, six days a week in class. I was hooked after I couldn't walk for three days after my first class. <laughs> and so I've done uh, Walam Kung Fu. No, it's a Walam Northern Praying Mantis Kung Fu. And my grandmaster is down in Orlando, Florida. Hello, Master Chan. And uh, so I did that. And I became a teacher after 10 years of doing that. And I started teaching students. And then I started choreographing martial arts forms for the students. Well, that turned into fight choreography. And uh, then, of course, with the experience from bladed weaponry, improvised weaponry, all that stuff, I think I have 26 weapons in my arsenal um, that are traditional Chinese weapons. But um, I got, thank you, thank you. It's yeah, it's it's good times. That's, Pointy that's, things. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> but then I got involved in the local scene for independent film. And there is a simulcast of the Oscars every year. And everybody gets together at a club and they play it on the big screen and all that. And I was talking to some folks and they said, have you heard about Atlanta? And I was like, what, what? And they said, it's blowing up. They're starting to get infrastructure for film. And I was like, oh my gosh, wow. So I went on Facebook and I got onto a casting page for an extras company, you know, background extras company. Yeah. And they were looking for uh, athletic men and women. Uh, I was like, okay. <laughs> so I sent them my pictures and they called me like 10 minutes later. And they said, um, hey, can you come for a fitting on Monday? It was Friday. And I was like, here's where I have to make the decision, right? I have to decide, okay, am I going to chase this again? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, 
yes, I can, you know. So I borrowed a friend's car because I didn't want to put any miles on my car. And at that point, it was like, oh, Atlanta. Oh. So I drove their car and I got as far as um, an hour outside of Atlanta in Adairsville, Georgia. And the car overheats. Oh, no. So I pull off into a gas station. I call the guy. I said, come get your car because he's got a flatbed and he can get the car back. But there I am at a gas station. I have to go to a fitting in, you know, a couple of hours. What the heck? How am I going to get there now? I was like, well, it's ended before it began, you know, and so I'm freaking out. I go through the gas station. There's a lady, an older lady playing bingo on a bingo machine in the back room. So I'm like, hi. I'll fill your gas tank if you take me to this address, you know? And mm -hmm. she was like, and she's like, huh? And I was like, no, no, I, I have to be somewhere in a couple of hours. And and I would, I would just thank you so much, your fingers and toes. If you could just, can I put gas in your car and you take? And she said, oh, sure, honey, I'll do that for you. And I was like, oh, okay, the dream is not dead. Okay, so we're back in play. So she takes me to Screen Gems, which is, you know, a, a studio that's on the outside of Atlanta. So now I'm like, okay, I got dropped off. Okay, I can do the fitting. How the heck am I going to get back home, you know? So I'm talking to other people that are there for their fittings as well. And uh, one of the girls I got to know, and I was like, any chance you could drop me off downtown so I can take a mega bus back home to, you know? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, sure. So she dropped me off downtown. I went on the app. I got a mega bus back to, you know, back home. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history. After that, <laughs> You, you know, film, 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 film. And that's when I got interested in stunts. Mm -hmm. Because where I was in Mockingjay 2, Hunger Games, that was my first mm -hmm. gig. Nice. And we were right behind the stunt team. So it was where we're storming the Capitol and all the stuff okay. starts blowing up. Yep. Um, and we were uh, behind the stunt team as they were going past and all these explosions are going off and all this stuff. And I didn't realize that, you know, when we're doing the same thing, the stunts people are doing that we really should be upgraded to a stunt person. And I could have gotten my, my screen actors guild card right then. No, yeah. I, I, I didn't, I didn't know any of that. So none for me, but that's when I started talking to the stunt people and on the second film, which was insurgent, the sequel to divergent, we were with the stunt team the whole time and um, went to an audition uh, for the first one. It's just like, need, they need bodies. They just need bodies to put in there. You're there with mm -hmm. 1500 of your best friends and you're just trying to look like whatever they want you to look like. But in insurgent, I had to go through a boot camp audition and we Man. had to prove that we could move tactically and we could work as a team. So got through that. There were 400. I had no idea about this. This was crazy. I had no idea there were 400 people in the beginning and, you know, kept going. People would get cut, people would get cut and then come back, come back and all this stuff. And I was one of 10 that made it. That's amazing. I was freaking my crap. I was freaking my crap. So, yeah. you know, I got to work closely with uh, Shailene Woodley and with T.O. James and with, you know, all those guys. And Jai Courtney, all those, all those really, really amazing people. And we were right there working with them. It was, it was really awesome. But again, you don't want to lose your job. So when they tell you to do stuff, the stunt people are doing, we give in and we do it and we don't get upgraded. And then that's da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. But then I worked on a couple of independent projects and I got the vouchers that I needed to become Screen Actors Guild. You can't do stunts until you're a member of Screen Actors Guild. There's too much liability involved. Okay. So gotcha. I became a Screen Actors Guild member in October of 2015. And after that, you know, you go to sets, shake hands, kiss babies, hand out resumes, networking, networking, networking. Mm -hmm. And um, I got my first uh, show on CW, which was um, the originals. And I got uh, murdered by a werewolf. And <laughs> I die a lot. It, it's a thing. I was going to say another kind of foreshadowing, maybe yep. a little bit of foreshadowing there. I I die horribly for a living. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. Hey, <laughs> hey, there, there, there's worse gigs, you know. There really are. There really yeah. are. But yeah, so that was you know that was kind of where all the the bigger productions started, yeah. and um, you know you just kind of hope that you bounce from production to production. 
and uh, keep the ball rolling so that, you know, you're in front of as many eyes as possible so that they'll choose sure. somebody else will see you and choose you for another thing. Sure. Yeah. And it, and it sounds like it pretty much has been rolling since then. Like you said, I mean, I mean, a lot of big projects and um, and then, you know, kind of coming up then not too long after that, I guess, was Halloween 2018. And yeah. um, and, and of course, you know, that that whole sequence is one of that film's best sequences, I think. Everybody, all the fans remember it and love it. And and your kill scene, you know, is you can't talk about a Michael Myers movie without talking about the kills. And that's yep. you know definitely one of the most popular. I mean, James loves it. James Hugh Courtney, he he talks about it all the time. It, it, how yeah. much he loves that that kill himself and and doing it. Um, we had a great time. I, I get to how many people can say they spend a night with Michael Myers? Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> no, it was um, that particular. We were hoping. This was guerrilla filmmaking at its best. They filmed the entire thing. I mean, you guys all probably know this already, but they filmed the whole thing in six weeks. Yeah. And it was, everybody was on a steamroller, just schedule, and it was go, 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 and get it, you know, get everything we need. And and it was absolutely amazing feeling the momentum of all the cast, yeah. the crew, everybody was just, all the actors involved. It, we were all with a common goal, and everybody loved the franchise and wanted to bring it back in an accessible way with yeah. Easter eggs and nods and right. not not too much crazy gore, but enough to hook the new generation. Yeah. So, yeah. But no, James Drew Courtney is amazing. He's classically trained. So we would talk about theater. We would talk about, you know, does he do Meisner or what is his, you know, what, what schooling did he have and all of that stuff. And it was really great. And to see him at age 45 was so great. And, uh, you know, so we got to spend a lot more time together and, and talk about how he's been doing and all my crazy stuff and, it's just so cool to see him just on the rocket ship, you know? Yeah, we love James. And and we, yeah, I mean, his, the way he talks about embodying that character is just, it's, it's like nobody else. And and I just love that about him, um, how much he, he put into it, how much thought he put into it and spirituality and everything. Um, yeah, he studied cats. Yeah. yeah he studied cats' predatory behavior. That's pretty cool. I, I know. I love that. Uh, and that kind of makes sense when you think about it, Michael. You know, he's he's a creeper for sure. You know, he's silent. He is. You know? When it also depends on if it's Rob Zombie or if That's it's true. regular, you know, because the the kind of stalking that Michael yes. does is different. Um, depending on who plays him mm -hmm. and sure. what the you know, what the paradigm is that they take on when they become the shape, you know, it's it's uh and it's pretty cool to see the differences that everybody chose to do. Not all of them are popular. I yeah. give you that, yeah. but um, but that's what we do. We portray the roles we're given in the best way we can, and we take things that we look up to from other portrayals, and we try to bring that to the to the fore on that. And in and in your case, like you said, I mean, it's not a, a huge part, but it's a very memorable scene that. You know, everybody remembers when they see it. It was, it was you saw some of it in some of the trailers, if I remember right. They they showed a little bit of it anyway, and um and just the way it's shot and everything. Now, be before we get into to the the day of on set, was that a a big audition process? Um, where the do, can you walk us through a little bit of getting that role? You're not gonna believe this. Um, <laughs> yes, you will. No, um, I got a phone call. And I, you know, the phone calls are the most important part of what we do. You have your ringer turned on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365. Mm -hmm. Because that's the way people get in touch with us to hire us. And I got a phone call, Ron Hutchison. Hey, Mary and Ron Hutchison, how you doing? I was like, hey, oh my gosh, I'm doing great. You know, I had met him previously and... Um, he says, are you available? Date this through that. And I was like, yeah, yeah, definitely. You don't say no. You never yeah. say no. Um, <laughs> there are no conflicting plans. Uh, so, <laughs> so I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. It's trying to act casual, you know, yeah, I got another kid, but yeah, right. yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think I can fit that in, you know? Uh, and, um, he says, okay, well it's, uh, the dates are this Charleston, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Charleston. Hmm. Okay. All right. 
So I show up on the date and uh, I go to the address that they gave me, which was the street where I did the scene. Wow. Uh, the house where I did the scene. Yeah. And I park the car, start walking down the street, and I see a familiar face. And uh, I'm right in front of the house where I die. And it's Marion Green. Marion Green is a stunt legend. Legend. She killed Mr. Orange in Reservoir Dogs. Awesome. And she has been in the she's been in the business for a long time. And we had gone uh, we met at a uh, stunt lecture uh, years previously, and we stayed in contact and all that stuff. And and we're M and M. We're the two Marians, you know. We're it's spelled the same. It's you know. And so I'm talking to her and and uh, you know her husband and Michael and all that stuff. We decide we're going to go to sushi that night and all this stuff. It's like, well, <laughs> okay, you know. And I see this old dude walking around. You know, there's a bunch of there's a couple of old dudes walking around on the street, and I'm like, okay, are they crew or or what? You know. And this one guy, this one old guy walks up. You know, and then another old guy walks up, and and um, before I got a chance to talk to them too much. Uh, here comes David Gordon Green, and he starts walking down the street. And I was like, I, I didn't, you know, I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hi, how you doing? And he looks at Mary and Green and says, oh, my gosh, you killed Mr. Orange in Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> and he's fanboying over Mary and Green. That's great. I'm just like, hey, I'm witnessing something pretty cool yeah. here. <laughs> you know, you know, when you're when you're in the middle of something really cool, like, uh, like, you know, Nick Castle, given, you know, I'm giving everybody another Michael Myers a big hug, yeah. you know, oh, and yeah. you're just like, I'm witnessing something pretty cool here. You know, Definitely. it's it's one of those moments. So we yeah. go into the house and they've got they've got sheets of window glass and they've got uh, extra arms and backs for the couches for the couch that I died on. And, mm -hmm. and they have, you know, the room is cordoned off and there's tape marks everywhere and. They have the carpet rolled up and stuff like that. And we go inside to see what the space is. That's kind of what you do when you mark mm -hmm. uh, a scene and try to do some choreography and stuff. And uh, we there was different choreography than what showed up in the film that we tried. Okay. We tried it. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of what clued me in a little bit because you, you don't know what you're doing yet. You just don't. Yeah. I, I didn't know I was doing Halloween yet. Yeah. And, you know, they were... We did the thing, and I, it could have been a cop drama. It could have been anything, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we do that, and we do this choreography, and then David Gordon Green says, mm, I don't know. That's a little too Jason. And I was like, horror <laughs> genre? Okay. I'm an, okay, horror genre? Okay, I'm, I'm curious now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we did the thing that we did, tried to figure out everything. Chris Nielsen did the, mm -hmm. you know, all the silicone work and the blood work and all that stuff. Uh, there's a whole other story for that. But, um, you know, at that point, it's like, okay, then we'll do this version. We'll do that. Initially, um, there was a chance I was going to get thrown through the window. Oh, man. That's why the candy glass was there. Okay. And, you know, it was like, because depending on how bloody everything got and how messy everything got, they were going to have to rebuild that couch every take. Right. And the window would have to be replaced every take. Yeah. So when they decided to not do it, there was, you know, kind of a sigh of relief um, <sighs> in the crowd. And uh, we went for sushi. And then, you know, I got a phone call uh, and an email. Uh, for costumes, you know, so mm -hmm. I was like, okay, this is the next step. That's what happens. You go and you get your costume thing. But that was it. That I was in. There was no audition. There was no, wow. it's like, can you do this? Yes, you can. They see your work and they see yeah. you can do it. You know, but at that and, point, and, but at that point, you still didn't know what project it was. You knew by no. now it was David Gordon Green and you got a hint. That I didn't know him from, I didn't like know what he was doing. Genre, but he hadn't done didn't, horror yet. Right. You know? He hadn't done any horror yet. Yeah. So I was like, okay, Pineapple Express, here we come. Right. You know? <laughs> ah. right. So I'm sitting there and I get the email and I'm like, yeah, okay. Because uh, you get the gig. And when they see your previous work, they know you can do the job. And so they know what you're, you kind of, they know what you can do when they call you. 
Okay. Yeah. It's not like you've got 50 of you and you go and then who gets the gig? No, that's, that's earlier. And if they, if they don't see you, then you kind of have to prove yourself. Yeah. But after a while, they know you, they know what you do and da, 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 da. So I go in for the costume fitting and I'm sitting down waiting. We always, you know, they, they have a person in there. Then the next person goes and the next person goes. And they try to get your fittings as close as possible so that the costume people can be as efficient as possible to get everything done. Okay. So I'm sitting there and I uh, I look next to me and I see all just regular clothes, regular clothes, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the email um, that I got, it was, you know, uh, agent uh agent orange was the name of uh, the working name for the film oh yeah yeah that yeah. was the working title okay yeah. so i was like okay all right and then underneath agent orange i saw the original halloween pumpkin with the triangle uh, nose yeah i was like ha 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 <laughs> so you recognize that you you you're I guess I should ask that. Are you a horror fan? It sounds like it sounds like you've already answered that. You're you're into horror movies. You know, I'm into certain. Uh, I'm into a certain aspect of them. I think that every one of the you know the big three. You got Freddie, you got Jason, you got Michael, and then you have all the other guys that you know are in different subgenres. And I really think that when you get into any of that stuff. You have to appreciate what side of horror it's on mm -hmm. and the ups and downs of the franchise. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, it's, it's, and even Halloween has had its ups and downs. Sure. Yeah. Hey, woman. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, you know, I, <laughs> trick or treat. No, we aren't. Nope. 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 We aren't going there. And, you know, Travis Tritt with the boots. Come on. Really? I mean, come on. <laughs> no, I'm not going there. But, uh, but yeah, I think. Each of the genre, each of the um, franchises have a niche. And yeah. there are fans that are so loyal to that niche, uh, depending on whether it's Hellraiser, that's a whole different story than mm -hmm. a, you know, Freddie, Michael, or Jason. Right. So is it the flaws of the human nature that get you? Or is it the unknown? Is it the supernatural with the exorcist? What, you know, what is it that each horror fan likes? And yeah. it's so vast. It is so big. So there's room for everybody. Come on in. The pool's great. Well, and there uh, is there are those niches for for everybody to you know, and and I think that's why everybody does have their their own favorites too. They they gravitate toward one or the other. Um. So so you're there, and this is when you realize, oh, this this is a Halloween. It's a Michael Myers movie that that yeah. I'm about to be in, and because you saw that that signature. That everybody knows yep. that opening credits pumpkin, and they all know because the cut from the nose down to the mouth, and and yeah, it's just one of those things that everybody knows right away. And so you saw that, and that was your first like, oh, yeah, that was my oh my goodness moment. And um, and I was like, okay, so in the house where we did the rehearsal, that's where things happen on the day. It's called on the day. Okay. And it could be in five minutes. They'll still say on the day we're going to do it this way, right? Mm -hmm. So. I get dressed up in my in my costume and they figure out what I'm going to wear. And they're like, well, you've just come back from soccer practice. You're, you're winding down for the night. You're kind of disheveled. You don't have anything makeup on. I was like, OK, no makeup on. I'm going to look awful. OK, great. You know, you always want to look your best so that other people right. want to hire you. And, 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 you know, I was looking a little rough on that film. But they put me in this, uh, you know, in the fleece, the green fleece. And the pants and these little loafers, no socks. I'm like, okay. And it was January. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want the homeowner to have a high bill. So they turned off the heat. A little chilly. Yeah. I felt really badly. I felt worse for the kids that were in costume walking up and down oh, the yeah. street all night because they used the hurricane fans. Oh, they man. used the blowers to get the leaves to go across. And here I am. I'm just in a meat locker of a house because it's a historic <laughs> house. They don't hold heat for nothing, you know. Yeah. And uh, Marion Green was in the house next to mine. And her house was just as dang cold as mine was. So we were all, it was a, it was a rough night. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. Peter Jackson from Lord of the Rings said something that I always bring back. Mm -hmm. And that is, 
Pain is temporary. Film is forever. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's true. You suffer yeah, and you true. suffer and you, you go through what you have to go through to get the scene done. And mm -hmm. then it's immortal. Mm -hmm. After that. So you're there and, and you're in costume now. And now you know that this is going to be, and you've rehearsed this. So now you know that this isn't just a death scene of any old serial killer on, on some new movie. This, this is going to be Michael Myers. So, yeah. and, and you still haven't seen James in the mask yet. Can you describe that? Like the first time you saw him in the mask and, and what that was like. Sure. I, I it was then when I, the first thing that crossed my mind was, geez, you're using a kind of old guy to do Michael Myers, but I guess it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And he had done a few stunts, not too many. Mm -hmm. And when we did the rehearsals, we tried doing it the stunt way, which is he holds onto the bun. I drive, I pull back, I, I hit mm -hmm. because I can aim for the pad. There's a little gel pad about that big and it's on the couch, on the carved wooden back of the couch and I'm supposed to aim right here for that little pad and it just didn't look right it, it did it looked too controlled it didn't look it didn't look violent enough mm -hmm. so I told him I said he's six foot four you know and here I am you know five or six and I said just do it man just just do it and so it was that next it was an evening shoot, of course. We shot all night until the sun came up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we did rehearsals, rehearsals, and then we did the thing. And uh, I was getting my makeup done. It took about four hours to do the makeup. Three, three, three hours, three, four hours. And Chris Nielsen was um, working. And I, this is cool. Right over there are the three Michael Myers masks that he's working on right in front of my face, okay? That's awesome. And I was like, it was really cool yeah um the hair is the hardest part everybody will tell you the yeah. hair is the hardest part and he was actually working on the hair and then when it was time to do all my prosthetics you know it was like i've got a prosthetic goes all the way around here mm. and it goes down to my shoulders down to the edges of my shoulders and then down into the neckline of the shirt and okay. I, they put a bladder they put a little hose here and then that leads to a squirter guy a little hose with holes in it mm -hmm. right here and uh then they did prosthetic over top of it and they slit the prosthetic and it was silicone so it closed back up so you couldn't tell it was pre-sliced uh -huh. and so they did all this and they did all that and then they did this and and we were on set and we were um getting ready and everybody was sitting in their chairs and stuff and and uh, James U. Courtney comes up and he's holding, he's holding the mask and, mm -hmm. and uh, it had the Velcro all mm -hmm. down the back of it, you know? And um, when they put him into that and I was just, you know, you always have to, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. You know? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, so everything starts, the night keeps going on and we're rehearsing, rehearsing, rehearsing. And the strength that we did, I didn't do the scream at first because I wanted to reserve for the real takes. Mm -hmm. But when we did that first on-camera rehearsal, everybody freaked their crap out because we did the hit. We did the cushion so I could aim my forehead at the hit. Mm -hmm. And it sounded horrible. It sounded like somebody hit their head on a wooden object. Ron Hutchison comes running in. Oh my God, are you okay? Are you okay? And we both look at him like, yeah, we're good. <laughs> like what? You know, <laughs> this is what we planned, wasn't it? You know. Yeah. And and it was it was kind of funny because the uh, the kids, you know, everybody mm -hmm. that was doing the the next scene or whatever, all the kids were down at the at the canteen. They were all eating, and when I joined them at the end of the night, they were like, <laughs> "Was that you screaming?" <laughs> He's like, "We could hear it all the way here." And I was like, yeah, "That was me." Well, that was kind of funny, but yeah, that was he. I was on carpet, and that meant the couch was on carpet. I was on carpet. There's plastic around, mm -hmm. and then I and and James U. Courtney was in the boots. But mm -hmm. once he hit the carpet, I didn't know when it was going to come. 
every one of those takes, 11 takes, four rehearsals. Wow. I never knew when it was coming. Wow. Every time. 11 every takes, four rehearsals. Wow. Yeah. 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 Man. Yeah. Um, at one point, because the hits were so hard, mm -hmm. my tube disconnected from the prosthetic and they had to glue the tube back in place because of the velocity of the hits. Um, and, and, using and this was after you told him to go for it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. So, you know, every time we would do it and they were like, go again, go again. I was like, okay, okay. You know, my hair, you know, I've got to redo the bun every time, you know, and it's like, okay. Yeah. okay. And my feet are numb. Can't yeah. feel my feet. It's it's starting to go up to my knees, you know. Yeah. Oh, you know, he's grateful to put that mask on because at least it's warm in there. Right. <laughs> and the orchestration of the camera crew to get yeah. that shot, that one shot. Yeah. As he was walking, and you saw the shadow mm -hmm. on the house next to mine. Yeah. There was a guy because you got the window right. You got right. my window, and then underneath it, you've got uh, the porch, and then the ground. So there was a guy that was kind of duck walking with a light so that he could shine it so that his shadow would show up on the house. And then you got another guy with the camera that he's so that it won't be visible and none of the shadows can show his camera walking behind him. <laughs> and it was, it was just, it was masterful. It was masterful. And so I always had to listen mm -hmm. because I could hear the hammer hits. Yeah in the house next to me. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. The kids come to the door. I'm like, oh my God, look at you guys, ah! you know, and you take the camera and I close the door. And then as soon as I walk in and then I turn toward the window, he has to be going. So all mm -hmm. of this is an orchestrated thing. Yeah. And if any of the pieces go wrong, we got to start from the beginning all over again. Man. Yeah. Damn. That and that again, it is such a memorable sequence for that reason because you know it's it's just that continuous and it's Michael's homecoming. We're like back in Haddonfield for the first time. The the theme music kicks in around that time. You know, it's yeah. it's all of this kind of happening, and he's kind of getting back into into killing mode, so to speak. And, yeah, um, yeah. scrape but, the uh, rust off. You know, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotta gotta get get back into shape, so to speak. That's right. But that's uh, right. <laughs> but man, I mean, so. The, 11 takes and yeah and you're you're after those rehearsals you're taking those hits every time telling yeah. james just just go ahead and actually do it, do and, it. And just do it while i was waiting in the uh trailer to get dressed um and get my makeup on the night on the day mm -hmm. uh i looked next to my chair and jamie lee curtis's bag was right there her wardrobe bag <laughs> that's awesome. i was like hey and that's when i realized <laughs> My measurements are the same as hers. And I was like, dude, <laughs> why can't I be your stunt double? Let me double you. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah, but go. um, but yeah, I had to get a picture of her stunt of her uh, wardrobe bag. So I've got a picture of her hang tag and all that stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that was a moment. But but yeah, so when we actually uh were doing the scene, they have to take a hose with the blood and a pump. And they have, and I've got a hose coming out through my sock, through coming out through my pant leg. So I have to walk up to that couch, and then I have to, as soon as the camera's up high enough, and I have to get my my eyes right between those two slats. Mm -hmm. I had to measure that every time I go up. I have to mm -hmm. make sure my eyes are going to be between the same exact slats every time. So when it was time to do the blood, I got up on the couch, and I instantly have to kick a leg out so that they can attach the hose. So they're doing it as you're like right there. After you live out. take, live take. Man. Yeah. So, you know, you've got the hose on and then they're going, reet, 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 reet. And they pump up the hose to prime the hose before we do the take. So mm. you see that and all the blood's <laughs> all the way up. And then they put it in and then they reet, 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 reet. And they fill you up a little bit and then they take it out. And they, you know, and then when they get ready to do the take, put that hose in there. You better get it right this one take. If you don't get it right on the take that they do the blood, all the all the costumes have to be changed. You have to take a shower, everything. Mm -hmm. You're gonna ruin it and burn money. Okay. Yeah. So there it's 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 high pressure. Yeah. <laughs> it's high pressure stakes. Um, but they wound up doing CG instead of the blood in the end. Oh, I got you. Because when he went, he had a handle, uh, the knife handle in his hand, mm -hmm. and it hit the back of my head. 
And that's how I know when to react. So he does the up, down, Mm -hmm. back. I get hit in the back of the neck and then throw me down. So as he was coming with the handle in the back of the neck, they start pumping like mad. My throat blows up like a frog. Oh, man. (laughs) (laughs) Too many rehearsals, man. Too many rehearsals. That's one thing that Chris Nielsen and I talked about when we met at age 45. It was like, ah. And he said, I told them too many rehearsals. That join can't handle that much impact. And I was like, yeah. And he said, and you were taking all that impact. And, and I'm not, I, I'm surprised it lasted that long. So um, they had to drain, milk me out. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> they had to milk. And this is outside in the freezing January weather. And here I am with a, a jacket covering me. Yeah. And they're, they're milking out this prosthetic. And then they, you know, draw dots on it. And then we did it CG after that, but we tried to do it practically. We tried. Yeah. Oh man, that, <laughs> mm. that, that we was were, amazing. We were, it was going to be so cool because the blood yeah. was going to hit the window and then the camera would have gotten red. Right. Right. And th- that's how it was going to be perfect. It was going to be perfect. Ah. And and again, just having to figure all that out, you know, that night and then to go through all that. And, and, and then, you know, like you said, the too many rehearsals and it, and it, it explodes like that. Oh man, that yeah. is uh yeah, because the timing is kids leave, yeah. me close the door, phone rings, me get the phone, me come toward the couch, me go away from the couch, me go into the next room, mm-hmm. he comes into the house, me come to the window, him come to the window, and then mm-hmm. you know, so everything, everything was it had to be right. It had to be just as it was, or else the camera wouldn't be right. I wouldn't be right. He wouldn't be in the right place at the right time. And it, it just, it was, it was really complex. So I'm so glad it turned out as well as it did. And I'm so glad that you guys liked it. Yeah. Um, the Slash and Cast Awards uh, for that year, I got Best yeah. Kill. <laughs> very, very deservedly so. I, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I, I did mean- the, uh, the acceptance speech. I did the acceptance speech and I filmed all around my house. Oh, and I did cool. kind of a jump cut sequence for it yeah. and i got to announce the worst uh film category uh so that was kind of fun oh that's awesome awesome well, <laughs> well congratulations belated on that that's well deserved on that of course that's on youtube i've got that on i, I captured that clip on youtube awesome awesome i'll check so it that's out. on my that's on my youtube channel definitely so 11 takes and all that and like you said i mean it had to be so choreographed you know and and when we watch it we you know we figured that that has to be the case, but to hear you describe it in detail like that about, you know, even like down to looking in between the right blinds every single time, because if you're looking through the wrong one, the camera is not going to be focused on your eyes and, and so forth. And and, uh, and then not knowing when James is, is going <laughs> to hit you with that knife in the back of the head. I mean, yeah, yeah. the next morning I had a sink full of hair come out. Oh, man. From just the constant rip, bang, rip, throw, you know? But um, that was, in the end, the way it turned out and the way everybody enjoys it, I mean, it's worth it. It's totally worth it to me. And um, the, the way that everybody came together to make it happen was really amazing. Um, So that was I think that's why when we have these conventions, it's like a reunion. Everybody comes together and is like, hey, see, I wasn't in your scene, but I love you, you know, and mm-hmm. all this stuff. And so and that was. They've that, seen your work. And... Yeah. And, and, you know, I've done some independent film work and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, if people want to actually see acting <laughs> instead of just that yeah. one scene. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, that's, you know, I've got, I've got a few films that I'm, I'm kind of, I'm pretty proud of my acting in those films. Um, so, you know, Keeping Secrets is a, is a film that came out and it's on Tubi for free. It's on Amazon. It's on all that stuff. Fated Reunion, um, you know, a couple other films done by About Face Media and, um, the lady that's the director, writer, a producer and all that. She and I are really good friends. So I tell her, I'll do what I can on your films. Anything I can do to, you know, Mm -hmm. help, just let me know. And so I get to play with characters on her work. Awesome. Yeah, well, I'll definitely check out some of those. And, and I'm sure your fans will, too, to see you um, play some other characters. And 
Yeah. And like you said, the way everybody came together and, and you know, filmmaking, it's always collaborative, but on a take like that, a sequence like that, where it's, you know, they're, they're, it's basically this long one take and it takes so much, like you said, so much rehearsal and choreography. And then to hear that you're working with one of your heroes in the same sequence, you know, yeah. and, and I've talked to James, uh, uh, I've been lucky enough to interview him here a couple of times over the last five years. And, and, you know, he, he, takes that scene very seriously and, and likes it um, himself and is proud of it. And um, and I've talked to other people that did other stuff during that night and everything. So I guess it was all the, the one night that, that you were there. Um, like you said, you spent the night with Michael Myers. You spent, it, that's it. Um, did that's all those it. takes on that one night. And that's kind of the way those kinds of roles work. Yeah. You have the rehearsals, then you have the day on the day. Mm -hmm. And we don't know if it's going to make the cutting room floor. Yeah. So that's a good point. <laughs> when it, when it was on the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> I lost my crap again. I was like, I made the trailer. Oh my gosh. I made the trailer. Yeah. I was, I was so thrilled. I was so thrilled. I couldn't believe it. And, and, you know, I was like, just on what I, I played such a small role. I just, that's all I did. And I made the trailer. Oh, it's like winning the lottery, you know? Yeah. Um. So of course the trailer is part of my stunt real oh um, sure you know i was like how often can you say you made a worldwide trailer ah you know <laughs> absolutely yeah and, and like you said you made the trailer and so tell us about the first time you saw the finished film yourself the whole thing all together because i mean it, there was this journey from it was a call it was a gig and you didn't even know it was a halloween movie or david gordon green it, it was it was just another gig and you're happy to have it and what? And like you said, even on the day of, you're you're giving it your all, knowing that hey, this this might get cut for time or something. This might be just a deleted scene in the long run, which happens all the time. We we hear about yeah. it all the time, you know. Um, so now the movie is real. It's done. It it comes out. Tell us about the first time you watched the whole thing. I went to a matinee in the middle of the day. I was alone in the theater. Mm -hmm. And I had my phone out, you know, because I was going to record yeah. the screen. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, oh, well, you know. <laughs> and um, when I saw how everything came together, it was really, you know, you, you kind of see the bits and pieces of the machine, but you never see the machine run. Yeah. And to see everything come together the way it did, it was it was really, really cool. And. One thing that I don't know if people realize we do this, but we watch the entire credits mm -hmm. because it brings back memories for us. <laughs> Every time we see, it's like a little mini reunion. It's like, oh my God, ah, 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 you know, and oh yeah, that's right. We were, oh my gosh, we were there and did this and that and the other. And it's not just the people you know, but it's the people you met. It's the relationships you started, you know. Um, when I saw Chris at age 45, he just, hey, man. Things, you know and, and we just it was like we never you know it's like we we hadn't been apart since 2018 yeah and when that thing was filmed you know we did i did my scene in january they released that bastard in october yeah. i mean they did it quickly they it did a quick, quick turnaround like i said guerrilla filmmaking at its mm -hmm. best but that's blumhouse for you yep. you know that's yeah. blumhouse so, um, but no, that's, we watch this, we watch the credits so that we can give the cast its due for yeah. making us look good with lighting, sound, props, set decoration, we call set deck. And you just, you want to pay respects yeah. because so many people leave as soon as the film's over, you know, they don't watch the credits or whatever. And you know that everybody else is doing the same thing that was in the film with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... But that was, yeah, it was really cool to actually see it on the big screen. And, you know, it was like, oh, I wish I had some makeup on. Oh, God. <laughs> that, you know, and you're kind of cringing at the moment. But it's like, oh, yeah, I look like I'm at the end of my day, don't I? <laughs> but that's what Gage Gordon Green told me. He said, you just finished your day. Kids were at yeah. soccer. You're doing the Halloween thing. And now it's over and you're done. You've had some wine. Just kind of chill for a bit. You get the phone call. And then all of a sudden it's like you start getting worried. And then you go and look for the murderer just because you hope it's not. You hope he's not in your neighborhood. And mm -hmm. then it's too late. Yeah. 
that's yeah. that's kind of the coaching that he gave me as far as direction. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said, "Ah, don't pay attention to the script too much. We don't." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw my lines, trick or treat, lady. You know, not until the novelized version did I get Andrea Wagner. Um, <laughs> that's right. You got a got a name in the novel. I right? got a name. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah, and and now yeah. you. I think there's five pages. I think there's five to seven pages of Andrea Wagner. There's a little backstory yeah. in there, there's a little hody ho in there. So that was pretty cool. They gave me a little extra time. And I love that they're doing that, doing the novelizations and allowing these authors to to add a little bit more on on characters like yours, some of these other characters, and flesh it out a little bit more. I I know the fans love that. It's like an extended edition of the movie in a way. Have you guys? Uh, did you see? The original Halloween's novelization? I have not myself. The original, it, the original Halloween's novelization fills in some stuff about like like therapy sessions with Loomis and and things like that. And and it's it's really kind of interesting to see what they did uh, to fill in some gaps that maybe you were wondering about in these novelizations. A lot of times you're gonna find some Easter eggs that lead the director to do, you know, that they kind of led the director to do what they did or something like oh, yeah. that because seeing the original script seeing the um the treatment that turned into the script a lot of that stuff gets cut but it makes it in as far as mood and atmosphere and yes. things like that that's right yeah some of the stuff that they're not as explicit about in the film they can explain a little bit more about in the novelizations like you're saying and it, it's it cheaper. makes what you see yeah it makes what you see on screen <laughs> make sense even more yeah, it's cheaper to write a book than it is to make a movie. I tell That's you right. that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes, it is cheap, and and that they can go a little bit, you know, a little bit longer, a little bit deeper into some of that stuff too. So now you're you're part of this, like we said, you're part of this franchise. It's it's this year marks 45 years. We've talked about the 45 years of terror uh, convention that that we were both at, and and we saw each other for uh, albeit briefly, but it was great to connect with you in person. And, um, and like you said, so many other people in this community, this fandom, um, former Haddonfield residents like yourself, it's just this magical event. We were there in 2018, and then we were lucky enough to be able to come back this year. Um, and it, it's always just this unbelievable gathering event. And I know for you, you know, being there, obviously, as a guest, I mean, it must have just been um, the epic for you i mean it, it must have been because i mean here you are again four and a half decades this is a an unkillable franchise i always say it's as a, it's as unkillable as michael myers is like this franchise yeah. is never going away it's gonna it's gonna be around long after we're all gone michael is like dracula and frankenstein he's gonna be around forever and um and every one of these movies you know are part of that so um has yeah it's like at the convention how does that feel it feels yeah. really cool. And at the convention, Rian Reese was right next to me over here. Yeah. Um, and Diva Tyler was over there. Oh, and love both of them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the great people. And yes. when we did the photo ops, we would get together like we were in yearbooks, <laughs> you know, and, and doing yeah. all this. And it's during the photo ops, I got to um I got to talk to Nick Castle and and James U. Courtney, of course, and got to know them, got to know Nick a little bit better. And um, at the end of the convention, when uh, John Carpenter, the man himself, shows yes. up for his little 30 minutes, and then he was sitting at the table, uh, I walked up to him and I said, thank you for killing me. <laughs> He's like, yes. oh, hey, that's cool. Yeah, no problem. You know, because <laughs> none of us would be here if we that's hadn't right. died, you know? That's right. But, but when we're doing, um, you know, and, and Anthony Michael Hall was right on the other side of the curtain from me, and he brought his yeah. kid on the second day, and it was really cool getting to talk to him and and uh, just walking around. The last day was kind of eh, slow, kind of moderate mm -hmm. pace, and and so we started, you know, the Halloween H, the Halloween 2018 book, yeah, was released at that. That's convention. right. That's right. Yes, and the behind the scenes book. Yes. Everybody was taking it around like a like a yearbook. Sign my yearbook. <laughs> and That's so we cool. all got to sign each other's copies, and that was really cool. Um, but it was 
amazing to see these lines for Dick Warlock that go to the yeah. back of the convention hall. And, you know, it was it was like you really feel the love when you see these people standing in line for hours mm -hmm. yeah. to get these autographs and, and things like that. And I I still can't believe that anybody would want my autograph. I was like, me? Really? Me? You know? <laughs> <laughs> that just that just blew me away basically because i was like wow that's 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 crazy and you see them unroll their posters mm -hmm. and i see marion sing on a yellow sticky and sign here and all this like oh my god they know yep. who i am are you kidding me <laughs> yeah <laughs> awesome that was awesome yeah. it was a it is it, it is an awesome event i love that they do it and just the, like you said the convention scene the community these fans and even though some of the movies can be divisive sometimes, and some fans can be a little too over opinionated online, when our experience in person, like at the actual events, like especially at that H45, it was just nothing but love out there. I mean, nothing yeah. but love. Everybody that was there was there because they love this as a whole. And it was just like, man, this is like, it. it well, it felt like home, you know? It, it, yeah, right. and there was a guy walking. There was a kid walking around with a silver shamrock, you know, the the yeah. bugs and the, and the yeah, pumpkin yeah, and all yeah. that, with the, with the, a screen on his chest playing the silver shamrock thing. <laughs> yeah, and I I always had a, a theory about that particular anthology film. It was John Carpenter. Made, he wanted to do it. That was his yeah. thing, you know. He, he wanted the anthology instead of Michael Myers in every movie, yeah. and so I thought that that would be a cool way of connecting it, that anybody and everybody who saw that Silver Shamrock commercial was infected with the Michael Myers, yeah. you know, curse. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe how cool would that be? Then you could have Halloween if it continued in any city, in yes. any place that, you know, any place where you saw that commercial, there could be a bunch of new possibilities for oh, yeah. a state, you know? And, hey, you know, you got to make the best of what you got, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because... People wanted to see Michael instead of just on that TV in the bar. Right, you know, right. you wanted to see him in the film. But it's like, well, what if that was the, what was that? It was a spreading of the shape. What if that was, you know, him yeah. reaching, them reaching out with the curse and, and infecting as many people as they could? I mean, you just yeah. kind of, you run your own scenarios just to try to make it into oh, yeah. um, a, a good addition to the franchise, I guess. And and a lot of us, you know, have enjoyed watching that Halloween 3 come into a new era of appreciation over the, like the last decade or so. Like a lot of fans that didn't give it a chance before have kind of gone back and reevaluated and said, Hey, this, this is a fun entry. And it, and it did kind of set up some interesting possibilities in its own right. Had they gone on in that direction. And of course now who knows what the future holds. I mean, they kind of did that a little bit with ends with the Corey character and a little bit of the yeah. spreading of the evil and that idea. But now and the novelization, they, the novelization, the yeah. novelization of of ends oh, addresses lots more Corey. In there. That's There's right. lots more in there with Corey, um, and with Lori too at the end. Definitely, yeah. We talk yeah. about that, um, but uh, you know, to now that A24 has come in and all these people that yeah, are trying with, to with the new TV, the TV series version. Miramax. Yeah, yeah. Now that that's happening, I mean. Who knows where it's going to go with that because they kind of finalized it in ends. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they, they kind of did the thing. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where they go with it from here on out. But it, it was just, um, I feel very honored to have played the small part that I played in the, such an iconic franchise. It's been a wild ride and I hope it keeps going. I intend to go to H50. And um, awesome. I'm trying. We're trying to get me into several on the East Coast this next year. Very cool. Um, so you know, if you guys go to cons, yeah. say you want me. Um, Definitely. But yeah, we're we're aiming and and trying to get me into some more uh, conventions this next year. It's amazing. I had no idea you have to plan so far in ahead. It's like they're yeah. already booked out a year. You know, you kind of have a to jump. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, blew my mind. Blew my mind. It's, it's yeah it's a big scene it's a huge industry now i mean it's it's pretty unbelievable but that's good yeah. that, that you'll get out to some more we're out here on the east coast so yeah maybe we can get out there to, to one and i'll uh, see you again yeah i uh, um i was talking to a guy over in uh scotland or ireland on facebook oh, wow. mm -hmm. and he was getting ready to go and see james at the convention oh. 
that yeah. was over there. Mm -hmm. And I said, and he, and I said, say hi to him for me. And then he got on my Facebook and he says, James says hello. <laughs> I was like, ah. like you said, it's all <laughs> big family now. It's worldwide. It is worldwide. And I, it's just, it is very cool to see how this has uh, been a gift to me. Yeah. And just and, and anything I can give uh, by portraying that part and giving them a really cool scene. I mean, it's it's like the anemone and the clownfish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other upcoming projects that you can plug or, or tell us about that we can look forward to seeing you in that, that you're at well, liberty to talk about at this point? Well, those indies that I told you about, mm -hmm. those are um, those they're are pretty cool. Now. Yeah, they're out right now, and they're all um, out now. Okay. Yes, keeping cool. secrets. Okay. is on Tubi for free and it's on Amazon for like 99 cents or something like that. Okay. Um, and then Fated Reunion, F-A-T-E-D, Fated Reunion. Okay. I'm playing a mean girl. Who knew? Right, that was possible. <laughs> <laughs> a captain of the cheerleaders at a high, high school reunion. I mean, that, that, that played that. <laughs> but, but Keeping Secrets is one that I'm really proud of, especially my final scene. Okay. Um, so if anybody wants to see some acting. Yeah. Um, because we, we only have this much time to do anything portraying acting in a death. You don't yeah. have long. You don't have right. long to do it. But uh, that scream is becoming pretty popular. I got people <laughs> wanting me to do the, the scream for them for their films and stuff so they can add it in, you know? I bet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. It's, it's yeah, iconic <laughs> now. You know, part of part of the part of the legacy. I guess. <laughs> It's it's kind of funny because I did the scream on the originals when I got killed by the by the werewolf, dragged around the yeah. SUV by the werewolf, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> and then I did it on, I did it on one other thing. I was screaming before I jumped off of a, into a quarry to kill myself. Uh, oh man! <laughs> and um, but yeah, it's it's surfaced many times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, who knew, right? <laughs> Happy to do it. Okay. Yep. And I do voiceover too. So, you know, the the voice, you know, anything that I can do that that in any kind of production, I enjoy all different aspects of it. So whether yeah. it be stunts, acting, fight choreography, I also do actor coaching. I, you know, mm -hmm. I'm in a part of a company called Action ATL. Okay. With Alessandro Folquito. Uh we have we we were in Insurgent together. And we created a company, an advising company uh, for actors and stunt people and work with Marvel and all those guys yeah. to make sure that they can move uh, accurately with weapons and fight accurately instead of movie fighting. You know, it's like yeah. you need to be able to fight for camera, but sometimes the techniques that are used are a little. Wah, wah. So yeah. we come in and we try to raise the level a little bit. Raise so. the bar some. Awesome. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. There's always going to be that guy. Watching the movie and say that's not how you hold a gun. Right. That's not how you walk with a gun. You know what I mean? We've all yeah. seen it. Oh right? yeah, definitely. So because not, not actors don't know how to hold a gun until they're right. taught. Who's going to teach them? We are. No. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, very cool. This is. Um, it's really you guys are doing a, a great service to the Halloween uh, and horror franchise, uh, mm. horror franchises, and the season and the cr the crowds and all the fans by doing these podcasts. I think it's really cool. Oh, well, thank you so much. That that means so much coming from you. And, and yeah, I mean, it, it comes from a place of love and passion for us, obviously. And um, and I love getting to know you and, and the opportunity to be able to do this because, you know, I I'm a fan. You know, I watch these movies and, I you know, I marvel at how they're made and I love behind the scenes stories. I mean, I love documentaries and director commentaries, but to get to have these one on one conversations that's very special to me, and 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 I don't take it for granted. So I I can't thank you enough for your time and hanging out and sharing your story and your insight and experiences with us. This has just been awesome. Yeah, I really had a good time. I I love sharing about it because people are curious. People yeah. want to know how it went, what happened, what were the ups, what were the downs, and things like yeah. that. So I hope um. I hope to do, uh, if there's a Halloween 2018 panel yeah. uh, that I might get inter invited to, then there are stories um, that I would like to share. But um, I think that most of the panels for two, for H18 would be for different things than just that one take. So, mm -hmm. you know, 
I'm just happy to be part of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're definitely you're definitely part of it. You're a big part of it. And thank um, you. And yeah, we'll do this again anytime. You know, you're you're welcome here, and and we'll talk some more. And um and this has just been awesome getting to know more about you and and um and hear your origin story and where you're coming from with all of this and and i know um you know our viewers and our readers and ourselves we're going to be watching your career as um it continues to to grow and and um yeah and check me out on uh instagram facebook it's always marion sing for some reason it's available i don't know um but yeah uh instagram facebook my youtube channel marion sing also um and just you know hit me up i'm out there and and I really think that the Halloween franchise and its fans in the horror genre in general um, have some of the best fans in the world. Absolutely. Well, we we might be a tiny bit biased, but we can't argue with that. We definitely agree. We think they're they're the best. So, um, again, thank you so much. And I always we never like to say goodbye, but every day is Halloween anyway. So we're just gonna say Happy Halloween. That's right. Happy Halloween. And to everybody out there, lock your doors.